Welcome to Performance Spine and Sports Medicine's video library. Today's topic is knee bursitis. My name is Frank Colabella, certified athletic trainer, licensed physical therapy assistant, and certified strength and conditioning coach. I'm also the director of sports medicine and biomechanics. As I just mentioned, my name is Frank Colabella, and today's topic that I'll be speaking with is about knee bursitis. So basically, what is knee bursitis? By definition, it's an inflammation of the bursa sacs in the knee. Now, what is a bursa sac? Good question. A bursa sac is a small fluid-filled sac that reduces the friction and cushions the pressure points between your bones, tendons, muscles near your joints. For this picture here I have, uh, you can see the pictures of the little blue circles, which represents uh, approximately maybe half of the bursa sacs that are located in the knee. And the way I explain when I'm working with patients is that these bursa sacs lubricate the joint. When they lubricate the joint, it's kind of like, if you want to say the analogy of the WD-40 or the oil can of joints. And what it does is it makes the bones or of any particular joint um, articulate or move more freely so there's no damage or it does not cause the joints to dry out. Bursitis may vary from different levels of severity. You have your mild and you have as much as if it gets infected you can have an abscess. Approximately there's 11 bursa sacs in the knee. From the previous slide that I showed you there was six of them and those are usually your primary bursa sacs. Then there's little tiny ones all in around the joint area. So if you suspect that you do have knee bursitis because there's different types of knee injuries, what makes knee bursitis different from, let's say, a ligament problem or a cartilage problem? Some of the signs and symptoms that you should notice on knee bursitis is tenderness, probably more centrally located in particular where that specific bursa sac is. Also, there's some swelling or a squishy sensation, limited range of motion, and possible redness. For that squishiness sensation that I just talked about, the best way I can explain it is if you're walking in the rain in the parking lot to go into a store and your sneakers get wet and you walk into the store and you hear your sneakers squishing, that's the, cons that's the kind of sensation that I'm talking about. So you might have it inside your knee joint. What are the causes of knee bursitis? First one is a blunt trauma falling directly onto the knee joint, specifically where one of those bursa sacs are. As you can see, there's also repetitive injuries, acute or chronic infection, arthritis, and sometimes even gout. For diagnosis of knee bursitis, there's ways to diagnose. You can do a orthopedic assessment by either a physical therapist or a medical doctor. There's x-rays, MRIs, ultrasounds, and orthograms. Here, here, here at Performance Spine and Sports Medicine, we do have an x-ray machine and an ultrasound uh, diagnostic that our medical doctors here use. Well, if you are diagnosed by our doctors here at Performance Spine and Sports Medicine, what are some of the treatments that you can do? Some of the treatments, obviously, here at PSSM, we have physical therapy. With physical therapy, you can use ice, iontophoresis, ultrasound, injection, anti-inflammatories, and acupuncture. As you can see here, I have an acronym listed up there on the, on the pre presentation of ICE, which maintains or is um, representing ICE, compression, and elevation. Sometimes you might see it on the internet as RICE, which I left the word R off, which means rest. If you came to physical therapy at Performance Spine and Sports Medicine, obviously, we want you to get better faster and stay better longer. And some of the things that we do here are exercise. And those exercises are straight leg raises, eccentric SAQs, so the SAQ means short R quad, stretching and yoga. Now from the previous slide I'm going to go back to some of the things that I've listed on here is iontophoresis, which people want to know what that means. And basically in the physical therapy side of PSSM is that we take some kind of uh, corticosteroid, which in this case is dexamethasone, place it on a pad, 
we place the pad directly on the point of tenderness or where the bursar is actually inflamed and we can drive that medication transdermal through the skin by having a certain parameter of electricity and it basically drives the ions of the particular medicine into the skin and it's the same thing as just having as a regular injection by a medical doctor or taking some kind of anti-inflammatories. Now the success rate is based on um, how much of that medicine is driven by how much electricity and also how the patient and the client react towards it. For ultrasound is one of the modalities we use in physical therapy. That's kind of like a heating mechanism and also helps out with decreasing the inflammation with uh, changes the molecular structure of tissue um, and of course the exercises that I just went over. So you come to physical therapy, you see a medical doctor and you got to remember too is that when you come to physical therapy you may be coming three times a week. So what do you do to continue that care of treatment? And some of the suggestions that I'm making that we make here as one of the um, education aspects at Performance Spine and Sports Medicine's Physical Therapy Department is that we will actually have uh, ice, maintain strength and flexibility and supplements such as fish oils and antioxidants. If the pain continues after a couple of weeks with physical therapy and all the proper things that you're doing, I recommend that you have a follow-up with your physician. In conclusion, that is my quick and brief summary of what knee bursitis is, how it's caused, how do you treat it. If you have any questions, you can contact us at Performance, Performance Spine and Sports Medicine at 609-588-8600. You can find us on the web at www.njspineandsports.net. Thank you for your time. This is Frank Colabella, Certified Athletic Trainer, Licensed Physical Therapy Assistant, Certified Strength and Conditioning Coach, and Director of Sports Performance and Biomechanics. That's it.